Listen to a part of a lecture in American literature class. Today we were going to study one of my favorite American poets, writer and musician Carl Sandburg. I admire this man of many talents. Have any of you heard of him? Yeah, I thought he was from Sweden. I read that he was a hobo. <laughs> Actually, Sandberg was born in Galesburg, Illinois. It was his parents, August and Clara, who had immigrated from Sweden. Yes, he had been a hobo. We'll discuss that later. Um, the family name was actually Johnson, but when August went to work for the railroad, there was another person with the same name, so he changed it to Sandberg. He and Clara had seven children, instilling in them the importance of hard work and a good education. This was thought to be the only way to achieve the American dream. What does that mean exactly? Good question. Basically, it means life should be better for everyone, not just a few. The term was first used in the book, The Epic of America, which we will be reading later in this course. <clears throat> now, let's get back to Sandberg. When he entered first grade, Carl asked to be called by the name Charlie, as he thought it sounded more like an American name. From then on, he signed his papers as Charles A. Sandberg. He dropped out of school at the end of eighth grade and went to work to help support the family by delivering milk and newspapers. But he wanted to travel. He borrowed a railroad pass from his father and in 1896 traveled to Chicago. Later, Sandberg joined thousands of American hobos who hid in boxcars to travel through Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado. Were they just bums who didn't want to work? Many of them were looking for jobs. Some just wanted an adventure. <clears throat> After a few months of traveling, Sandberg returned to Galesburg and tried working as a house painter. That didn't last very long. He then enlisted for service in the Spanish-American War. The war ended six weeks later, and as a veteran, he qualified for a free college education. He tried attending the U.S. Military Academy in West Point. Unfortunately, his grades, uh, he failed the mathematics and grammar tests and was denied entrance. Imagine only having a middle school education and being expected to pass college exams. Could you do it? Not me. Well, Sandberg was able to attend Lombard College in Galesburg. He developed a real love for reading and writing poetry. However, he left college without graduating, and once again, as the expression goes, he heard the call of the open road. This time, his travel took him to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where he met Lillian Station. They married the next year. She encouraged him to use his original name of Carl in his writings. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of European fairy tales. Like Jack and the Beanstalk? How about Tom Thumb? Yes, those are definitely good examples. Sandberg read some of them to his three daughters who could not relate to stories of kings, queens, or talking animals. He was inspired. Uh, he wanted to write American fairy tales, something with skyscrapers or trains. Does anyone have an idea why this concept would be important to him? Uh, Miss Powell? Well, not many American children would ever see a king or queen. Or hear a talking animal. Please continue, Miss Powell. I just think most children could relate to stories about trains or skyscrapers. Very good. So did Sandberg, who wrote the Rutabaga Tales for children. During his lifetime, Sandberg won three Pulitzer Prizes, two for his poetry and one for his biography of Abraham Lincoln. Carl Sandberg's last move was to Flat Rock, North Carolina in 1945, where he continued to write until his death in 1967. Throughout the United States, there are numerous memorials dedicated to Sandberg. Colleges and schools have been named after him. On January 6, 1978, the United States Postal Service issued the Carl Sandburg stamp. Amtrak added a second train, named the Carl Sandburg, to the line. This writer's life was even portrayed in a musical, The Courtship of Carl Sandburg. He was a prolific writer of poetry, music, and stories.